In this video, I'm going to solve this question. A researcher finds evidence of heteroscedasticity in the regression model yi equal to a plus bxi plus ui. How will you modify the original regression in order to deal with the problem of heteroscedasticity in each of the following cases if error variance follows the following structure? And these are the three parts that are given to us. Now, before I start solving the part A, I want you to note a couple of things over here. The first thing that I want you to note is that we are dealing with the problem of heteroscedasticity and heteroscedasticity is the violation of assumption of homoscedasticity. So heteroscedasticity is the violation of assumption of homoscedasticity. Now, because we are dealing with the violation of one of the assumptions of classical linear regression model, we are going to assume that the other assumptions of classical linear regression model are not violated. That means we are going to assume that the other assumptions of classical linear regression model are satisfied. And by other assumptions, I mean the assumption which says that the expected value of the population error is equal to zero. Note that the notation for the population error is ui. So the expected value of the population error is equal to zero can be written as expected value of ui equal to zero. The other assumption that we have is that the independent variable xi is a non-stochastic variable. So xi is a non-stochastic variable. And by non-stochastic, we mean that it is fixed in repeated sampling. Okay, and we have some more assumptions. So whatever the other assumptions are, we are going to assume that the other assumptions of CLRM are satisfied. And the only assumption that is violated is the assumption of homoscedasticity. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing that I want you to note is that they have written how will you modify the original regression. By this original regression, they mean the regression equation that they have written over here. Okay, and the last thing that I want you to notice is the last line of this question. So they have written error variance follows the following structure and these are the three parts that we are given. So according to the language of the question, these three parts are telling us the structure of the error variance, but we do not see variance of ui written on the left hand side. We see expected value of ui square written on the left hand side. So now the question is that if this is the structure of the error variance, then why haven't they written variance of ui on the left hand side of the equation? Why have they written expected value of ui square over here? Well, the answer is that expected value of ui square and variance of ui are one and the same thing. In this case, it can be shown mathematically that variance of ui is equal to expected value of ui square. Let me show that to you. So using the formula for variance, we can write that variance of ui is expected value of ui square minus expected value of ui whole square. And as I told you that we are going to assume the other assumptions of classical linear regression model are satisfied. That means the expected value of ui equal to zero. So the second term over here is zero whole square. And this implies that the variance of ui is just equal to expected value of ui square. This is the reason they have written in the question that they are talking about the structure of the error variance. But in the parts, they have not written variance of ui on the left hand side. They have written expected value of ui square everywhere. But you should understand that expected value of ui square is nothing but the variance of ui. Okay. After the discussion of these points, we can get started with part A. In part number A, we are given that expected value of ui square, that is the variance of ui, is equal to sigma square xi square. We are also given in the question that the original regression, the original regression is yi equal to a plus bxi plus ui. Now, because the variance of ui is a function of xi, that means the ui is heteroscedastic. And to solve this problem, we have to apply some transformation such that the error of that transform model is not heteroscedastic. Okay, so let's see how can we transform this model. So the trick that we are going to use to transform this model is that we are going to divide the original regression by the square root of the term that is multiplied with sigma square. That is, I'm going to divide, let's call this equation one. So I'm going to divide equation one, that is my original regression model, by the square root of the term that is multiplied with sigma square. So what is the term that is multiplied with sigma square? It is xi square. So I'm going to divide the equation number one by under root of xi square. Okay, this is how we are going to transform this model. And what is the under root of xi square? Well, I can write this as xi square raised to the power half. And this is equal to xi. The powers are going to multiply. So 2 multiplied with half. 
2 and 2 gets cancelled. So this is equal to xi. So the under root of xi square is equal to xi. So our transformed regression model will become our transformed regression model will become yi divided by xi equal to a divided by xi plus b xi divided by xi plus ui divided by xi. Okay, so this is the transformed regression that we have. Now, if our transformation is successful, then the new transformed error that we have got, that is ui divided by xi, this transformed error should be homoscedastic. If we can show that this transformed error is homoscedastic, that means our transformation is successful. But if this transformed error term is not homoscedastic, that means our transformation is not successful. So now let's check whether this transformation has solved the problem of heteroscedasticity or not. And to do that, we are going to find the variance of this new error term that we have got. That is, we'll have to find the variance of this particular term. And if the variance of this particular term comes out to be constant, that means the problem of heteroscedasticity is solved. If it doesn't come out to be constant, that means the problem of heteroscedasticity is not solved. Now for the sake of convenience, let me let ui divided by xi is equal to vi. And our purpose is to show that the variance of ui divided by xi is some constant now. In other words, our purpose is to show that the variance of vi is some constant now. So let's find the variance of vi to check that. So the variance of vi can be written as expected value of vi square minus expected value of vi whole square. Now, first of all, let's figure out what is the expected value of vi. Well, vi is equal to ui divided by xi. That means expected value of vi is equal to expected value of ui divided by xi. And as I discussed in the beginning that we are going to assume the other assumptions of classical linear regression model are satisfied. And one of the other assumptions that we have is that the independent variable is a non-stochastic variable. So if xi is a non-stochastic variable, you can actually take it out and you can write that this is equal to one divided by xi multiplied with expectation of ui. I'm not going to explain you the working of the non-stochastic variable in this video, as I have already explained that in one of my other videos. If you're not that clear with the working of the non-stochastic variable, then check the description of this video. The description of this video has the link to the video in which I've explained the working of the non-stochastic variable, okay? So because xi is a non-stochastic variable, we can write it in this manner. And the other assumption that we have is that the expected value of ui is equal to zero. So this is zero. This implies that expected value of vi is also equal to zero. So this implies that this second term is nothing but zero whole square. And this means that the variance of vi is just expected value of vi square. So now we just have to find this. Now, what is the expected value of vi squared? Well, the expected value of vi squared, we can write it as expected value of ui squared divided by xi squared. And once again, because xi is a non-stochastic variable, I can take one divided by xi squared outside, and this will become expected value of ui squared. Now note that we are already given what is expected value of ui squared equal to. In this part, expected value of ui squared is equal to sigma square multiplied with xi square. And if I substitute that value over here, then I can cancel xi square and xi square. This implies that variance of vi comes out to be sigma square, which is just a constant. That means the transformation that we have done is a successful transformation because the transformed error term that we have, that is ui divided by xi, now it has a constant variance, okay? Now, before I move to the next part, I want to be clear with one thing over here. I want you to notice the trick that I applied in transforming the regression. So basically to transform the regression, I divide the original regression by the square root of the term that is multiplied with sigma square. And this is the same trick that I'm going to use to solve part number B and part number C. We are going to divide the original regression by the square root of the term that is multiplied with sigma square. Okay, so let's take a look at part number B and part number C. In part number B, we are given that expected value of ui square is equal to sigma square multiplied with xi raised to the power 9. And once again, the original regression model that we have is yi equal to a plus bxi plus ui. And now we have to transform this original regression model in such a manner that the transformed error term has a constant variance. 
And as I told you, we are going to follow the same trick over here. We are going to divide the original digression by the square root of the term that is multiplied with sigma square. So sigma square is multiplied with x i raised to the power 9. So we are going to divide your original digression. If I call this equation 1, so we are going to divide the equation number 1 by the square root of x i raised to the power 9. Now one of the mistakes that many students do in a hurry is that they write the under root of x i 9 as x i cube. Well the under root of x i 9 is not x i cube and this is quite simple to see. Let me show you how to verify this. So under root of x i 9 can be written as x i 9 raised to the power half and the powers are going to multiply so this can be written as x i raised to the power 9 multiplied with half and this is equal to x i raised to the power 9 divided by 2 and 9 divided by 2 is not 3 it is 4.5 so the under root of x i 9 is actually x i raised to the power 9 by 2 or if you want to write 4.5 i'm going to write 9 by 2 because i find it more easier to work with but the under root of x i 9 is not x i 3 because if you square x i 3 you're going to get x i raised to the power 3 multiplied by 2 this is equal to x i 6. So xi cube is the under root of xi raised to the power 6. It is not the under root of xi raised to the power 9. Okay. Now with that out of the way, we are going to divide the original regression by xi raised to the power 9 by 2. So that means our transformed regression, our transformed regression will become yi divided by xi raised to the power 9 by 2 equal to a divided by xi raised to the power 9 divided by 2 plus bxi divided by xi, this is 9, 9 divided by 2, plus ui divided by xi raised to the power 9 divided by 2. And once again, we are going to check whether the transformation is successful or not. So we are going to work with this transformed error term now. I'm going to call it vi. If we are able to show that the variance of this transformed error term, that is the variance of vi is constant, that means our transformation is successful. But if the variance of VI is not constant, that means our transformation is not successful. So let's find the variance of VI. So the variance of VI can be written as expected value of VI square minus expected value of VI whole square. Now, first of all, let's find what's going to be the expected value of VI. Now, because VI is equal to this term, this implies that the expected value of vi will be equal to expected value of ui divided by xi raised to the power 9 by 2. And because xi is a non-stochastic variable, I can take it out. So this is 1 divided by xi raised to the power 9 divided by 2 multiplied with expected value of ui. And because we are assuming that the other assumptions are satisfied, that means expected value of ui is equal to 0. This implies that the expected value of vi is also equal to 0. So this is 0 squared. That means the variance of vi is just expected value of vi square. And expected value of vi square is equal to expected value of ui divided by xi 9 by 2 whole square. Okay, so this is what variance of vi is equal to. Now we can write this implies that variance of vi is equal to expected value of ui square. And the square of xi raised to the power 9 by 2 is going to be xi raised to the power 9. We can take 1 divided by xi raised to the power 9 outside the expectation because xi is a non-stochastic variable and then we will have over here expected value of ui square. Now as we are given in the question that expected value of ui square is sigma square xi raised to the power 9. This implies that variance of vi is 1 divided by xi raised to the power 9 multiplied with sigma square xi raised to the power 9. This and this will get cancelled. This implies that the variance of vi is equal to sigma square which is a constant. That means our transformation is successful because the transformed error term that we have got, it has a constant variance. That means now we no longer have the problem of heteroscedasticity in this particular model. Okay. Now let's move to part number C. In part number C, we are given that the expected value of ui square is sigma square multiplied with xi raised to the power 1 divided by 3. And this is the original regression that we have. Now we are going to follow the same technique to find the transformed regression. We are going to divide the original regression, that is this equation, by the square root of the term that is multiplied with sigma square. So that means we have to divide equation number 1 by 
the square root of the term that is multiplied with sigma square. So the square root of xi raised to the power 1 divided by 3. Now what is the square root of xi raised to the power 1 divided by 3? Well this is xi 1 divided by 3 raised to the power half and the powers are going to multiply. So this is xi 1 divided by 3 multiplied with 1 divided by 2. So this is xi raised to the power 1 divided by 6. Okay, so we are going to divide the original regression by xi raised to the power 1 divided by 6. If we do that, we'll get yi divided by xi raised to the power 1 divided by 6 equal to a divided by xi raised to the power 1 divided by 6 plus bxi divided by xi raised to the power 1 divided by 6 plus ui divided by xi raised to the power 1 divided by 6. This is your transformed regression and in this transformed regression, this last term that you have over here is your transformed error term. We can call it vi and now to check whether our transformation is successful or not, we have to check whether the variance of vi is constant or not. Once again, the variance of vi is equal to expected value of vi square minus expected value of vi whole square. Now I have already shown you in the first two parts that if you try to find the expected value of vi, you will get zero. You can find the expected value of vi for this particular part on your own. You will get that the expected value of vi is equal to zero only. So that means the variance of vi can be written as expected value of vi square and expected value of vi square can be written as expected value of ui divided by xi raised to the power one by six whole square. This is equal to expected value of ui square xi 1 divided by 6 multiplied with 2 and once again because xi is a non-stochastic variable I can take it out. So this implies that variance of vi is equal to 1 divided by xi raised to the power 1 divided by 3 multiplied with expected value of ui square and we are given that the expected value of ui square is this. So if we substitute this we'll get that this is equal to this multiplied with sigma square xi raised to the power 1 divided by 3. This and this will get cancelled. That means the variance of vi is equal to sigma square which is a constant term. That means once again our transformation is successful because the transformed error term that we are getting that is this term does not have the problem of heteroscedasticity now. Its variance is coming out to be constant. Okay and that's it for this question.